Tonight on the show, we've got the star of Rocky. Okay, okay. Uh, stick, stick. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, what a wuss. Let's start this show. Yay! What a lineup we've got to kick off the year. One of the biggest action heroes of all time, Sylvester Stallone is here! Yeah! It's a warm welcome back to the great Robert De Niro, ladies and gentlemen! Top actress Carrie Mulligan is here! Star of Superbad and Moneyball, Jonah Hill is on the show! Plus, we'll be having music from Jake Bug, everybody! <laughs> Lovely Jake Bug. So sweet, so sweet. Uh, delighted to welcome Robert De Niro and Sylvester Stallone. How incredible is that? Together at last, they're both in a new boxing movie, Grudge Match. Uh, now, obviously, not their first time in the ring. Uh, De Niro starred in the legendary Raging Bull. Wow. <laughs> now, if you haven't seen it, it's sort of a romantic comedy, you know. <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle with gloves. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Bob. Bob gained a lot of weight to shoot the scenes at the end of that film. I, I think we've got a photo. Yeah, unrecognizable. <laughs> unrecognizable. Uh, Sylvester, of course, played the iconic boxer Rocky Balboa. Oh. <laughs> now, Rocky had so many epic fights. This is from Rocky IV. Uh, this one's from Rocky III. Uh, this is from Rocky II. <laughs> To be honest, a complete mismatch. I mean, <laughs> at the end of that film, what a mess. Uh, not just Rocky, though. Sylvester was also troubled Vietnam vet John Rambo. Mm, a violent, sadistic vet. Where have I seen that before? <laughs> Let's get some guests on! Later, we'll have music from Jake Fogg! But first, he's not just good, he's super good as Jonah! They like you. No, no, hey, no, no. No, it's you. No, there was silence before you walked out. <laughs> uh, what a couch, ladies and gentlemen. What a couch. Yeah. Um, uh, are you staying, Bob? I am. Okay, fine. No, my hat, you mean? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah no, because I have a shaved head. <laughs> oh. And I, it might I, frighten I feel us. better. Yeah. It might frighten us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, it is acting royalty, ladies and gentlemen. I think you'll agree. Acting royalty? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some. No. Yes, yes. No, some. Some newer members <laughs> of the royal family. That's for sure. And, and then some, some and, and vintage yeah, royalty. Us, us has been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. And, uh, and Rocky, very popular in the Mulligan household, I believe. <laughs> Isn't it? No, it is. Is that right? My, my mum's dog's called Rocky. And <laughs> my dog's called Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> It was meant to be. I know. Anything that walks on four legs reminds people of me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Jonah, do you have a cat called Jake LaMotta or anything? No, <laughs> no I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, he really would. Yeah. He would. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> my mum's here. I always bring a family member. You did. You brought your dad the last time. I brought time. my dad last time. Um, you, oh, so where's, where's your mum? Let's wave at her. Oh, God, she's going to hate this. Mum. Mm -hmm. Where is she? Oh, she? oh, there she is. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hi. Well, no, lots of women are waving. How many mothers do you have? 
Who's the real? Oh, you? Oh, the, the one that looks like you. Okay, yeah. 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 The, the lady who actually looks like Kerry Mulligan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, can I just ask you? You know you were here to promote shame. Yeah. Did your dad ever see it? No, dad's never seen shame. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. My yeah. dad has. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Shane? Yes. yes. You okay? <laughs> Looking away. <laughs> yes, I have seen it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Jonah, is it true that you you you're encouraging people to go to see your movies? But like, weren't you in the movie theater encouraging people to go to your movies? Yeah. Well, I, I started out when I was you know young. I, I just turned thirty a couple of weeks ago, and uh, uh, you don't look it. Thank you. Thank you. I look forty-eight. No. Um, <laughs> but I, I was in a, when I started, you know, when I was like 19, 20, and, and I was like 20 or 21, and I was real excited because I was in a movie theater and one of the previews for a film I was in came on and it was like really exciting. And I was with my friend, and I was trying to make him laugh, and the, the preview came on and we're in a movie theater, and no one knew it was me. Uh, no one even knew who I was yet or anything. And I go, I'm seeing that to try and make my friend laugh. <laughs> and then a guy in front of us who had no idea I was behind him just goes, Yeah, maybe on an airplane. <laughs> Dead serious, and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's cruel. Yeah. I deserved it, though, to be honest. <laughs> hey, talking of uh, selling tickets, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Robert De Niro are here to sell tickets to their new movie, Grudge Match, which opens here on the 24th of January. Now, to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, Thank it's you. really good. How is he? Uh, they're both, you're both. <laughs> <laughs> They cut him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it, it's it's funny, but it's dramatic, and my God, like the fight scene, the big fight is just fantastic. Thank you. Obviously, you have form. I mean, there's a uh, raging bull, Rocky, and for some reason, I thought watching this film that it was your idea, this movie. But in fact, it was you, Bob, who were getting Sylvester to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, we, when I was told about it by Pete Siegel, the director, and uh, Billy Gerber, one of the producers, and, and I said, yeah, send me the script uh, a couple of years ago, and then, but I always knew that it had to be uh, Sylvester to do it. You're saying that now. Is, that, <laughs> <laughs> no, is there anybody saying. but Sylvester available? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's original. <laughs> Stallone, that's gonna work. <laughs> but why did you have to talk him into it? Well, he, he had reservation. I think he was worried about it being a comedy it wouldn't work. And, and I said, uh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll learn it together. We'll, it'll be okay, you know. Because and, and, uh, <sighs> uh, I've said it before, it could have come out like Raging Bullwinkle against Rocky the Flying Italian Squirrel. It could come out <laughs> like really a, 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 a comedy, but a, an unintentional comedy. But the way they worked it and then the, the drama and the other cast and Alan Arkin and Kim Bassinger started to get very, very good, so I thought maybe I should not be so foolish and so precious and protective of Rocky and let it go. But also, it's not just as easy as saying, oh, yeah, I'll do that movie. Like, you then had to get ready. Yeah, there is that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, how hard was that? Well, I work out, yeah, I work out. So you, you have a baseline, and then after that, the fighting, the boxing is a great workout and, and fun to do. It's invigorating, it's hard, but, uh, you know, it's good. And in terms of, like, physical transformation, is Raging Bull still the, the biggest physical transformation you've done, Bob? Yes, yeah, physically, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I gained 60 pounds. Oh, my God. Yeah. How long did that take? Took uh, oh, about close to three months, four months. Wow, and yeah. we've, got, we've got... There you are. That's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> and and yeah. is the story about France true? Yeah, I ate in France. I, I really... Uh, <laughs> ate France. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, uh, the food is, was, the only problem was a little rich, so I couldn't eat as much as I thought I could, whereas if I went to Italy, it would have been even better. I might have gained more weight. But. And is it nice putting on 60 pounds? Uh, the first 15, 20 are fun. Then it's drudgery. It's work. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> could you, how much did you put on for Copland? Copland put on about 35. I went to a place called the Canadian Pancake House there, and like, every day I lay face down in batter. I'm telling you, guys, are you done with that, that French toast? Yeah, I was forgetting all over. It was, it was bad. But you do look, you do look so good in, in, in the fight sequences. But equally, those scenes at the beginning, is that yeah. stock footage or are they it's digitally? Stock footage. Oh, it is stock yeah. footage. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they digitally did a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. they did both. Both. Yeah. Like that's incredible. Yeah. That's so, so basically, at the beginning, you see them as young men. Well, that's why we're hoping our careers yeah. could be extended another <laughs> 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 
traumatised. <laughs> yeah. And because you're both so recognisable and people, for some reason, seem to love doing impressions of both of you, <laughs> um, does it ever make you, like, when you're acting, does it, does it ever make you self-conscious? No. Uh, <laughs> you never get worried about doing yourself. No, well, that that's another story. <laughs> <another stuff. laughs> no, 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 Do you? Yeah, sometimes, I, cause sometimes I'll hear a uh, playback and I'm going, God, it's a horrible imitation. And I go, oh, shit, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I really do sound that bad. Because, <laughs> yeah. Bob, you, you know there's that picture. Have you seen this photograph? That, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I was trying to figure where I, where I did it or when I did it. It's, it's this guy called Andy Gotts, and he took a picture, and he claims it's you doing an impression of Al Pacino doing an impression of you. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, listen, we've got a clip. This is uh, Bob's character trying to convince your character to go ahead with the grudge match. There you go, the yellow stuff again. So, seriously, it is great. Here's the thing. I don't think it's a spoiler, because it would be a very bad film if the grudge match didn't happen. So, uh, there is a big grudge match at the end, and it's phenomenal the boxing at the end and there's incredible shots where for both of you and how, how is there a way to do them you know when you you've been punched and you come around yeah. and it's like it looks like your face is hanging off yeah 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 is there a technique to that it's, there's two ways to do it one is to get punched and that works well it really is true and then, we did a slow motion it's not worth it and then there's one where Bob clips me, and you, you put whatever you want in your mouth, like a little blood, whatever, and you cough at the same time as you're being hit, like, ah, and that creates a, the effect without it looking like, because people try to spit, so you get hit, you go, <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work. So you cough it out. You cough it out, you literally go, ah, and it creates this. Because what we did... We, it's like disgusting, <laughs> this mural of pain. Well, we got the, the software and put it in that camera there, nice. Yeah. Uh, so it's like high speed so that you can slow mm. it down. I, I'm just talking, words are coming out of my mouth, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, apparently it can do this thing. So if we demonstrate, if you... I'm not going to ask you to hit me, but if you could pretend to hit me. Right. Yeah. 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 Really pretend. <laughs> This is on the peak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Got that it. was the last show in the game. <laughs> <laughs> we dedicated to a big black box around the whole show. <laughs> so if you can demonstrate, so and I think oh, we do have a glove. Sorry. Excuse I. Uh, is that the right one? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> but you are pretending. It's like being home again. <laughs> yeah. You look way too happy. <laughs> You look delighted. <laughs> <laughs> I really so liked your movie. I can't tell you how much I like this film. <laughs> Best film I've ever seen. <laughs> You're all invited. I'll buy you all tickets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if well, stand up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so I'm gonna so I'm gonna put a little water in my mouth. So yeah, I yeah. cough the water. Yes. Okay. Now I'm gonna come across this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs> and then what I can. <laughs> It'll come to like your ear, but then you just turn. Mm -hmm. And it'll look like I nailed you. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, now, that's good. Okay. I didn't spit on anyone, no? Oh, no, I didn't spit on anyone. Okay, now, <laughs> now we get to watch that back. Uh, in, and this is, I, I guess this is what they do in the movie. I this don't is know. It. So here, here it is. Here it is.
what? I've got a face like a windsock. <laughs> I know. You can only keep, you know, keep that going for a few seconds and you go, oh, God. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's like, cut on the cut. And actually, weirdly, in terms of hitting people, Kerry Mulligan, you've, I mean, you did damage to Ryan Gosling, didn't you? Yeah, I've, I've hit him. Yeah. In a movie. In a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked him. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I got to hit him a lot. He, um, we had to. Well, it was a slap, so it wasn't it wasn't a hit, but it was seventeen takes. <laughs> this was the drive. Were you really hitting? He him? wanted it. Bad. He wanted it bad. But after seventeen times, even your hand must have hurt. It did. It was. That's why I suffer. Ow. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> uh, well, in terms of uh, physical things, in uh, Wolf of Wall Street, Jonah Hill's new movie, uh, there's loads of kind of. Physical things going on. It's wild. It is a wild yes. film. But there are some fights in that as well. Yeah. Uh, John Barenthal, actually, who's in your guys' yeah, film, yeah, yeah. plays my uh, our drug dealer and my nemesis in the film. And uh, there's a scene where I'm antagonizing him on a rooftop. And we did it a few times. And he's supposed to hit me in the face. And we did it a few times. And we were then sitting in between it at Scorsese's little. Uh, video village where his monitors are and there's a little couch and the three of us are sitting there <laughs> and John's pacing in the background with no shirt on. He's a really buff, buff guy. <laughs> Tough, was a boxer, was yeah, a serious yeah, boxer guy. Yeah. And uh, Marty just kept saying, oh, it doesn't look good, it looks fake, looks fake, looks fake. <laughs> and like, didn't like it and I just wanted to please him. And he goes, hey kid, you wanna try one where he hits you for real? And I just was quiet because I'm not gonna say no and I didn't wanna say yes. So <laughs> I was just I was hoping the silence would eventually let the idea just float away into the atmosphere. <laughs> and uh, Leo's sitting over here, and I look to Leo because, you know, he's my friend. Maybe he'll, he'll be like, oh, well, maybe there's another way to do it or something. <laughs> and I turn to him, and I just look at him, and he just goes like this. <laughs> he just looks the other direction, and I go, oh, all right, yeah, let's, let's do it. And uh, John just, in the next take, the whole thing was crazy, and he just nailed me and I had these big fake teeth in the film and they split in half and just flew out of my mouth. Oh my God. Yeah, it was great. It's a great scene though. I mean, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street, it opens next Friday and unbelievably it is based on a true story. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. Yeah, this guy Jordan Belfort. Mm -hmm. um, so he was a stockbroker of sorts. Of sorts, you know, more these guys kind of convince people to uh, it's called pump and dump scan. So they, they, they convince you to give them your money, but they know they're not going to make you any money back. And they basically just rip people off for all their money. Kind but of these stuff. guys made billions. I mean, they made incredible amounts of money. Yeah, they lived very excessively. And the whole movie is about kind of how they got rich, their greed, their excess, and uh, kind of how that plays out in the end. And he was around. Jordan Belfort was on the set and things. He wasn't on set, but he, uh, Leo and I would spend time with him off the set. And what's he like now? Does he... He's in the movie, you know. He's in the last scene. Yeah. Introducing yeah. Leo's character. Yeah, at the, he's at the end of the yeah. film. Uh, I mean, he, he gives, like, motivational you speeches will, yeah, motivational. about business and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know... Learn from the master. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, you play his second-in-command, uh, Donnie. Yeah. And we've got the clip here, and this is when uh, Donnie first meets uh, Jordan Belfort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say you, you were fantastic in that film. Really, it's, thank you very it's much. It's great. I met Jordan Belfort a few times when he was in his heyday, and uh, you really? guys did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually on that boat too. So he was. He was Hello, quite the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got around, pal. <laughs> hey, your film was amazing. It really, Carrie. You did great. I mean, it's really. I it's even a wrote, good I couch even wrote tonight. the Kellen Brothers a fan letter. It was flawless. It really wow. was. I'm telling you, it was like seamless films. But it's an amazing year, you know? We're just hanging in there, punching <laughs> each other. <laughs> <laughs> you guys here are doing really magnificent work. No, it is a really enjoyable film. It's such yeah. a kind of, it's such a big great, great festival of excess. Yeah. And like, there's scenes that, like, like an orgy on the plane. Mm -hmm. Like, is that at all fun, or is it just wildly embarrassing? Uh, it was cool to see Martin Scorsese feel embarrassed that day a little bit, because he's so... He's so in control of everything, but there was all this, you know, everyone's naked on the plane and, <laughs> and he's in charge of everything and it's like he doesn't want to be, you know, out of line or anything, so he's being so respectful of everyone. So he took his clothes off too? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. These people, he's asking us to do these insane things, you know, so it's kind of funny because he laughs and he goes, oh, I, I don't know, I, you know, maybe go 
put your head there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> disrespectful, but uh, you know, and then it, everyone, it, it honestly just it, it was so un, unsanitary. That's the only thing I think. <laughs> it was like, oh, was it crazy and fun? I was just like, yeah. I needed to purell like my whole body. <laughs> <laughs> But you did. You did try to have sexy time on a plane. That's not true. I didn't try and have sexy time on a plane. That is like the worst lead-in statement I've ever heard. I am a romantic, and when I was 18, uh, 12 years ago, I, I, I flew on a plane, and I sat next to a beautiful girl my age, and I was excited because in my romantic mind, that was going to be my wife, and I thought we were going to fall in love. And so we started talking, and she was like, flirting back and she was great and she uh, you know was like laughing and, and we were having a great time and I was like so on top of the world and I go excuse me I'm gonna use the restroom and I go and she can't see like it's obscured you couldn't see the the restroom and so I'm there and a guy's in there and he's taking forever right so like he's in there it's like seven minutes go by eight <laughs> minutes go by and he finally comes out and I go in, and it, not to be crass, but it, it smelled like someone had passed, passed away. <laughs> and so I go in, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, it's just horrible. So I hold my breath. I use the bathroom very quickly. I wash my hands. I come out, and she's waiting for, oh. for, for the restroom. <laughs> and so, so, uh, she, so I open the door, and she's, like, all, you know, smiley still. And we squeeze by each other, and I don't know how to, I want to express it like, you know, like, but some guy was in there before, you know, but it was so quick, and she's like, what? And it's so fast, and then her face just turned, and, and she says there was no turning back. And so I sat back down, and she comes and sits next to me, and I'm like, uh, you know, just so you know, there was a guy in the bathroom before me, and I was waiting, and in like mid-sentence, she just goes, it's fine, it's fine, and just, Reads the rest of the. Oh, <laughs> some guy, you know, ruined my uh, future. You know? <laughs> bad thing, bad thing. And Carrie, of course, you haven't had the the Martin Scorsese experience, but you did have the Leonardo DiCaprio experience yeah. for the great for the Great Gatsby. Yeah, that was a daunting. But I'd never met. Um, oh, there he is. Um, I'd never met Leo or Baz Luhrmann or anything, and yeah, you know, I was yeah, it was a sort of pretty scary one. But didn't the audition, like, what scene were you auditioning with? Oh, oh, um... <laughs> keep up, keep up. Cue <laughs> <laughs> um, <Q yeah>. anecdote. <laughs> um, you have editors oh, on this show. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so we, so we had to do the scene where uh, she kisses, Daisy kisses him, and, you know, you don't just kiss Leonardo DiCaprio, so... Uh, we were sort of halfway through the scene, and I was sort of like, here. Yeah? Oh, sorry. <laughs> keep, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Stay in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, keep going. You, you can use my head as yeah, a... So I was like, I was like here. Um, uh, and, um, and then I was like, shit. shit I should, oh, sorry. Um, you I was like, should I... <laughs> Did you, like, drag her up? Did you drag her up? <laughs> um, I didn't know if I should kiss him or not, so I sort of got that, and then I sort of asked Baz, should I kiss him? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it, and then I got the job. Yes, yeah, so, hey. That's how you get yeah, it. Yeah, hey. Good job. Good. 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 Yeah, good. good at the kissing. Good at the kissing, yeah. And she was fantastic in the movie. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, You're welcome. Really. Yeah, really. It's like a love it. It's like a love it. And... Uh, we have one more, as you, it's already been talked about, and one more excellent film to talk about. Uh, Kerry Mulligan, a new Coen Brothers film, Inside Lewin Davis. It opens on the 24th of January. And now, again, this is a real story? Uh, <clears throat> no, it, well, it's, it's loosely based on Dave Van Ronk, so it's kind of set around a time in New York, but it's loosely based on his... It's his, some of his songs and kind of the idea of that sort of time in Greenwich Village in New York. OK, Orleans. so it's set in the 60s and it's around the, the folk scene. Yeah. And uh, tell the nice people who you play. I play um, <laughs> uh, a, part of a singing duo. I'm, I'm a folk singer, so I play... Uh, there's Jim and Jean, so I, I'm... <laughs> I'm Jean. So sweet. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, Jim is, uh, is played by Justin Timberlake, and then Lewin Davis is our close friend, who's played by Oscar Isaacs, and we're sort of a little group. And this is kind of a different sort of role for you. Like, you're quite tough in this. Yeah. 
Yes. Did you like it? I did. Yes. <laughs> um, you unleashed. I did unleash a little bit. It was good. I mean, I, I came straight from doing um, The Great Gatsby, so I'd sort of had about six months of dresses and diamonds and, you know, being very girly. And then this, which is a dark wig and a polo neck and swearing and sort of marching around. And, and you didn't meet the Coen brothers. You, what, you, what, you filmed yourself? I did an audition in my hotel room, yeah. I sort of did a little sort of selfie audition. What, on your phone? Yeah. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. yeah. And what did you do? What did you give them? What... I, 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 I gave them angry, angry. <laughs> 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 it was the scene from the movie. It's angry American. And did you have a friend holding the phone, or did you yeah, no, really I did, hold I did. it out like no, that? I had a friend well, holding. Well. No, I did. Yeah, my, my friend. Did. We, I did two actually. I did one. I did one audition where. Um, I just I was so excited to get to audition for the Coen Brothers because I never thought I'd get to, you know, yeah. send them anything that they would see. Um, so I did an audition after a dinner where I'd had a few drinks with some friends and I was a bit tipsy and thought that that would be a great time to do the audition because when you've had a few drinks and your accent is better, generally, everyone agrees. <laughs> 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 but when I have to do American accents, I drink. No. Um, <laughs> and, um, so, I, so I had a few drinks, and then I was like, God, maybe she should be eating, you know, because that's... Brad Pitt does that, and he... That looks great. So <laughs> maybe I... Uh, that's all the time in films. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a really drunk audition where I was just eating this chocolate bar to, and, and was literally about to press send and send it to Joel Cohen and my friend was like, maybe wait. <laughs> we'll see it in the morning and then, thank Save God. Save it I, as a draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use it as a rehearsal and then I did another one. Um, well, listen, we've got, we've got a clip and it, in fact it is you singing. Oh. Yeah. Do, do you like singing? Um, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I can sort of, yeah, well... <laughs> why did why that was such a long answer? I yes. know. There's not a car at stake or anything. It's just... <laughs> what am I doing here? I hope I get this right. <laughs> I do like singing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, like it or not, this is you and uh, Justin Timberlake singing. And now, listen, we've got uh, Oscar winners and Oscar nominees. Uh, but, you know, that'll happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. <laughs> they'll be nominated. They'll be yeah, nominated at the end yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all good. It's all good. But it's interesting in any career, kind of, when you know that you've made it. Like, Bob, do you remember the first time you thought to yourself, ooh, I'm a bit famous? I think, I mean, I think, uh, well, after Godfather 2, I, I've, that's probably, um, things changed uh, more. I had done movies before then and had... I remember I was on the unemployment line once uh, <laughs> after having done a few films and having leads and features and stuff. Uh, but I was still on the unemployment line. And I was with an actor who I knew had, had done one film and he, 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 had, he was in that grace period where you do the movie and it's being cut and you're waiting for it. So that's the way everybody's very optimistic. <laughs> And he told me, I don't, you know, I don't read scripts. Uh, they send them to me. They go here, the casting director. And I said, I said, you know, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of it now because otherwise, uh, I don't know. And um, the thing, was, I went, so the movie opened, and it was done by a very well-known director who had a big success. The first, so I went to, so I, I, that day I went to the theater. I happened to go. I was taking a bus up. I went to the theater on the east side, in New York. And the, the theater was empty. The guy was sitting there. He was upset. It was a total disaster. And I found myself saying, um, "You were good, but the movie I wasn't." Seeing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was good. And presumably, were you? You must have been quite well known when you were driving a taxi, preparing for taxi driver. No, I wasn't. I, uh, people, re I, I drove for a couple of weeks. People recognized me. Did they thought through the mirror, but not no, so, uh, Yeah. So no one thought, oh, how weird, he's won an Oscar and now he's driving a taxi. No, only I, actually one person recognized me. <laughs> <laughs> and they just thought it was very strange. No, I said I'm doing research on a movie. So. And they were like, yeah, poor him. He's yeah. such a dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't realize till you guys were coming on that um, in fact, you know, you're in Grudge Match, but it goes all the way back that Taxi Driver and Rocky were you know. up for Oscars at the same time. <laughs> exactly. And actually, they're at the theatres right next door to one another. So I go out there and go, hmm. So I take pictures like Rocky, be like that, picture like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and here we are. And on the night, did people know that Rocky was, it, was Rocky a shoe in or? No, no. It was actually it was uh, about four or five elderly ladies with umbrellas were trampling me to get out of the theater. I mean, it was like the first ten minutes. They go, "Who is this?" Greasy guy, I mean, <laughs> you know, with a crooked mouth, and then eventually it, it caught on. It, 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 but it was not by any means magic that first day. It was a horror. Because I was assumed it was just sort of Hollywood folklore. But the the story about you not giving them the script without agreeing to you starring in it that that right. is true. Oh yeah, definitely. It was uh, just uh, one of those crossroads situations that every artist faces early on. Go left, go right, and if you make the wrong decision, it, it, you sometimes regret it forever. And I just knew I had, I wasn't a very good student, but I decided I, I, I always like understood dialogue, whatever. So I wrote something that I know I could do, that I could feel good with, and that could show everything that is possible in, in my repertoire. They said, well, yeah, it's great, but let's have. Brian O'Neill do it, or let's have Burt Reynolds do it, or Robert Redford do it. So they were bringing up all these bankable names. And I said, no, I don't think so. And at that time, I was down there. I mean, I had to sell my dog. We didn't have enough food to feed. I said, one of us doesn't eat. It's either you, my wife, or the dog. One of us. So it, it was like one of those things where you really roll the dice, and it, and it paid off. But it was uh, a big long shot. Because you talk about selling your dog. We've got a pic... I don't know why oh, you... my dog. We've got a picture of... really, my We dog. do have a picture of the dog. Is that the dog? That's it. Uh... You can see why I couldn't feed him. Yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> that's a it's a buffalo. It's a bull... A bull mastiff. Bull mastiff. Yeah. yeah. That's a dog. I, I don't know why, even when I was totally broke, I always wanted to have an animal with me. And I mean, literally, I was... As an usher, making thirty-six dollars a week. That was it, you know. And <laughs> so I'm buying this dog. That meant I don't eat. You yeah. See that? Maybe or you eat the dog. It's one of the things. <laughs> <laughs> but well, the, I story, the, story the, has a, the story has a happy ending. I must. It does. Yeah. It, it does. So finally, I get the job. I go back to the fellow I sold it to, who now won't give it back. And he's a rather short guy. Really. Really short, and he's. Did he ride the dog? <laughs> the dog had turned into a piece of furniture. I mean, he literally used it as a bed or something. But he says, so that he paid me like sixty bucks for the dog. He goes, I'll, I'll give you the dog back for three thousand. I said, I don't have three thousand dollars. He goes, All right, I want to be in the movie. So I put him in the movie. So he's in rock. Yeah, he's he's in the first kind of little scene. He goes, uh, I'm walking in. He goes, How'd you do last night? I said, I I did great. You should have been there. He goes, I go. What, how'd you do? I said, what are you, deaf? He goes, no, I'm short. I go, ah, yeah. Power the pin. <laughs> Save the line and get out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, it's time for some music. This young man has just had a Brits nomination for Best British Male Solo Artist performing a song about love. It is Mr. Jake Bug. <laughs> Well done. Beautiful. Come and sit down. Uh, you have a little seat there. Jonah, Jay, Carrie, yeah, Robert De Niro, Sylvester yeah, Stallone. Yeah, oh. Yeah, well done. A beautiful, really, really sweet song. Oh, very, very sweet song. And that's from the second album, Shangri-La, which will be out now. Uh, congratulations on the Brits nomination. Oh, thank you. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what you were talking about in here, so... Well, no, because I wasn't sure whether to say it to you or not, because I didn't know if you knew that you'd be nominated. Yeah, I knew, yeah, but... Oh, right. <laughs> what did you think I was talking about? <laughs> could have been anything. But well, it, it could have been anything. Yeah, you could have... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations, anyway, <laughs> on your life. <laughs> uh, no, so it's very good you're nominated for Best British Male Solo Artist. That's the good news. Bad news is you are up against David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he won't turn up, though, eh? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know who else you're up against? David Bowie and... Um, no, who else is doing it? I don't know. <laughs> it's your nomination. They won't give it to you if you're not interested. They'll, they'll watch this, they'll think he doesn't, he doesn't want to win it. Well, it is, You've yeah. got to fight for these things, Jake. Come on, you want it! It's, it's nice to be nominated, but, you know, if I win or not, I'm still going to carry on doing what I'm doing. So. That is true, yes. Yeah. But you'd have a prize, Jake. <laughs> I've got no room in my suitcase for that. <laughs> yeah. Talk to the winners, talk to the nominees, see who's happier. <laughs> Before we go tonight, uh, just time for a story in the red chair. So, who be there? Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Now, what's your name? My name is Lana. Lana. Yep. And uh, where are you from, Lana? 
Australia. Oh, lovely. And do you live here now? Yes, I do. Oh, what do you do? I'm a graphic designer. <gasps> She's a graphic designer, everyone. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Bob couldn't care less, love. <laughs> <laughs> He's bored of your life. Uh, OK. <laughs> okay. Uh, off you go with the story, Lana. Oh, well, basically, tonight was very exciting for me uh, because from the time I was about 13 years old, I used to have a kind of fantasy or dream about Mr Stallone being my father. She may be, I might be, it's scary. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Were you in Australia 24 years ago? That's what I was like, no man wants to hear that. <laughs> You like the fantasy bit. Oh yeah. my god, we've hit a low. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have someone else. Let's have someone else. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, oh, there, there's someone's applauding you. Uh, what's your name? I'm Kate. Kate? Yeah. Lovely. And where are you from? I'm from where you're from. <laughs> oh, you're from Bandon? Yeah. Oh, lovely, very nice. Are you just over for the weekend? No, I live here now. Oh, you I'm, live here now? Yeah, I'm here about four months. Oh, great, you've really lost the accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll be going with story. Okay, so my story goes that uh, two years ago, it was exam time in university, and I was driving home from the library, and I met the lads, and... Uh, Come on! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well done, everyone. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go on the red chair, you can just contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, thank you to all my guests tonight, Mr. Jake Bug, <laughs> Jonah Hill, <laughs> Terry Mulligan, Robert De Niro, and Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> join me next week with musical guest Keen, star of the hit show Girls, uh, Lena Dunham. After winning actress Olivia Colman, the long walk to freedoms, Idris Elba, and movie star Michael Fassbender. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>